Coming up in this episode of Behind the Sound. Hi, Terrell. This is Jay Leno. I'm, 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 like, I'm so, so, so sorry. Damn, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm so sorry it took me so long to call you. <laughs> oh, my God. Feel this isolation. You can't touch that falsetto, oh. man. It's going down. People gather around. Grab a mic. Let's wrap this behind the sound. It's going down. People gather around. Grab a mic. Let's wrap this behind the sound. Welcome to this episode of Behind the Sound, where music is life, and I am so pumped to introduce this next guest. I had the pleasure of going out to Vegas and hear this man light up a theater as he opened for Jay Leno. He's got a number one album out right now called The Real with East Bay Soul that has been number one on Amazon for five weeks. He's been touring. He's got singles lined up, ready to go for the next year. He's got a show that he's in town for. So I had to steal a little bit of time with my homie, the one and only Terrell <laughs> Edwards. What's up, my brother? My man, my man, RJ boy. Oh man, it's good. It's good. Life is good, man. It's good to see you. You're looking trim. You're looking good. <laughs> that's, that's huh? I'm sucking it in. I'm sucking. <laughs> <laughs> no need, brother, no need. I can't imagine the audience, the viewer right now who hasn't heard of you. Mm. But for the people who maybe haven't, fill us in quickly on the rich musical history that you have from some of the people you work with in Atlanta to here in Edmonton to yeah. Vegas and now in LA. Give us a little background and insight into Terrell Edwards and your uh, your musical journey. Yeah, yeah, man, I tell you what. First of all, it's been a good ride. It's been an interesting ride. It's been a hard ride too. I mean, you know, um, I started doing this, man. Man, really the vision, the dream is eight, eight nine years old. You know, my, I, I watched my dad you know, sing in, in you know, choir. Uh, I mean, and I, I'll be honest with you, I think the bug came when when my dad's singing at church, you know, and people were like going crazy at church, you know. I mean, I'll see how, you know, what he was doing just inspired people, made people feel something, you know. Was, I mean, feel something. So, um, I, and my dad was my hero, man, you know, and, and we went on, uh, as I just, as I watched him he, and he started directing choirs, he had to, he had this ability, man, to, I mean, I, I knew people couldn't sing. I was like, he would pick people that to sing a solo. I was like, well, what is a dad doing? I'm like, man, <laughs> they can't sing. And six weeks later, man, he's after working with them, man, they, they wow. had, they had the courage and they were able to put out and put out a, a, a note, man, that was good. That was rich. Yeah. And I was just really inspired. I mean, he had, per I mean, he could not play the piano, but yet, if a piano playing was if piano player was playing a B flat or, or playing a C and he was and he should have been B flat, my dad was like, "That's not B flat, right?" Like, well, how do how do you know that? So, oh, you know, all of these things is just really. I mean, I really was fortunate to have you know a, a good benchmark for where where to be in in wherever I want to be. He's also a really hard worker, you know, as a photographer, and so the imagery you know of of, of what was beautiful really came natural to me because this is all I knew you know what I'm saying uh you know but as, as time went on I found my voice my, my sister also was a nightingale she's just just beautiful I mean it's just two of us and she's older than me by six years and so I'm really the runt of the family you know I'm just checking it all out nobody's really paying me any attention you know and I'm you know I'm in the I'm in the back shed here you know just singing to myself you know when I finally decided that I wanted to do this it was like what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? You play basketball, you know, like, so, you know. And you play I, basketball? I didn't know that. Well, not, not as you can see, I don't play now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you better not play <laughs> me know, now. But, you know, yeah. it, it was, it was, it was every brother's, young brother's dream sure, to play yeah. basketball, you yeah, know, yeah. so, so, I mean, I was, with, I was part of the crew, but, you know, uh, I found my voice because actually I wasn't that good of a basketball player. All my homies could play, right. you know, and I could put the ball in the hoop. Right. You know, I was had some I had some athleticism, some, some hops and all that, but I wasn't I wasn't gonna be the next, you know, at that time, Magic Johnson, you know what I'm saying? So, right, right. But, but uh, it surprises me though when you say that your family sort of laughed at the idea of you singing because they, you have you have that fine and I'm not just tooting your own horn and I'm obviously biased because we're homies. Yeah. 
Um, but I knew you in a different light before we were ever friends and knew that you could already sing. And mm -hmm. then before we really got to be friends, had a chance to hear you sing in a theater in Vegas where yeah. my head yeah. just exploded. So to me, being surrounded in music all my life, I have a good ear for music. I'm not the greatest player either, mm -hmm. but I know talent mm -hmm. when I hear it. Mm -hmm. I know a perfect pitch when I hear it, you yeah. know? And so it surprises me that everybody around you didn't know that from a very young age. You right. have that kind of voice that if you sang at three years old, you fucking know that this guy can sing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, man, you know what? I, 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 and I share this story starting there for a reason, you know, because the first part of the story to me is, you know, you know, uh, at, at the end of the road is like, if, you know, if, if no one else believes in you, you got to believe, you right. know? And so, I mean, I, like I said, I, I found my voice. I said, yeah, yeah I, I, I sound good to me, you know, and I got, to, got into high school and this, and this, this high school teacher, man, I wasn't even uh, in, I wasn't even in course, but I knew this lady, Carol Haywood. I'm going to just shout out her name. Yeah. And it was me and, and a guy named Eric Benet. And we were, we were in course. Oh, just, you yeah. know, just yeah. a little, just a little Eric Benet. He was Eric you know? Jordan at the time. Yeah. <laughs> And so, you know, uh, we, I mean, he, Eric was actually in the chorus and I would sneak into the chorus. I don't even know if Ms. Haywood noticed to this day, but I would sneak into the chorus and I would skip auto shop of my second period and go in because one day I, I, I brought I brought this cassette in. I'm really dating it now. Yeah. And I let her hear me sing this song that I, I, I really, uh, I, I really just kind of wore my dad down to let me sing in church. Right. Jesus is love by Lionel Richie and the Commodores. Yeah. And he let me, he let me sing it. I let her hear it. And she said, Oh my God, you can sing. You can, you're a tenor. I got to get you in here. And, and that lady lit me up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Threw down the basketball as a recreational thing. Yeah. You know, I'm, you know, and I was spending, getting, spending all my time with her learning later on. Uh, uh, Eric was the jazz vocalist mm -hmm. for the jazz ensemble. He couldn't, you know, he, he, his, his schedule conflicted somehow and uh, he couldn't be the jazz vocalist. So Robert Simeo, who was the jazz vo uh, choir uh, director said, Terrell, I need you to come and sing because mm -hmm. Eric can't do it. Mm -hmm. So you I slid mean, right in there. So now, so now because I decided, you know, and, and I didn't know this then, but this is, I mean, this is energy, you know what I'm saying? Because I decided I can do this, you know, and I, I things started happening right. at, at a very early age. And it's, it's, it resonated with me that, you know, if, all I got to do is just kind of just, just stay the course. Right, right. So, you know, high school came along. This is a long story, so I hope we got time. But, but, but high school came, uh, came to an end, mm -hmm. and I got uh, scouted by Berkeley. Mm-hmm. To go to to go to music school, cool. And I was really excited about that. Yeah, and and dad, now remember now, dad's my hero. Still, I mean, to this day, he still is. But I went. To, I said, Dad, you know what? I think I want to go to school for music. And and, and dad squashed it. He's mm -hmm. like, No, 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 no. I said, You need to learn a trade. You can't make any money doing music. <laughs> so I was like, I wasn't going to school for like a trade. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? He's like, Well, I mean, look up. You can be a pharmacist or something. I was like, <laughs> Right. Like, or I was like, what? What are you talking about? I was like, so, well, if I'm not doing, if I'm not going to school for music, you know, then I'm going to join the Navy. I'm doing something. So I, I joined the Navy. He joined the U.S. Navy. And let me tell you, and, and, I, and my whole plan even then was, this is what I want to do. But if dad is saying it's not a good idea, let me do four years in the Navy and then I'll have it figured out by then. If I still, if I still, want to do this then I'm going to do it. Right. And what happened is that um, I got in. Um, there was a guy that was singing cadence. You know, you guys see those, see those movies where people are marching mm -hmm. and somebody's singing in the back. Mm -hmm. We had this guy singing in the back. I didn't, I wasn't singing, but he lost his voice. Mm -hmm. I still had this in me that I wanted to sing. You know, he lost his voice. But him and I used to kind of just hang out you know, back, you know, uh, when, when we were sitting in the, in the barracks mm -hmm. and just sing a little bit. And he was like, man, I, I, my, I lost my voice. Why, why don't you do it? Mm -hmm. And I started singing mm -hmm. the cadence. I started singing cadence, man. And, and the entire 
area knew we were coming when I started singing, and they wouldn't let me stop singing it. Yeah, man. Yeah, they wouldn't let me stop. So sing a little for us. You remember yeah. something right now? One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. That, you pick them up, you put them down. Rock your body now. You one, two, three. You one, two, three, four. Hey, yeah. hey. So, so. That's a little too sweet to be in a in a navy cadence. Yeah, that's, that's how I. That's how I was yeah, doing it, man. Yeah, I like that. So, yeah, that's dope. So you know, fast forward to all of, all of these nuggets of of, of encouragement. You know, and me just having this burning desire. I could not see myself doing anything else. Yeah. But let me tell you, going back to my dad squashing the idea, what I did learn when I was in the air uh, was the the art of business. Mm -hmm. You know, see, what I didn't know is that I I had to dream. But if I was going to make this dream work for me Mm -hmm. in terms of in terms of business and and, and make a living, Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, you know. Talent alone was not going to do it. Mm-hmm. So I did learn that, you know, just by being a supply guy, mm-hmm. you know, in the U.S. Navy for for um, for six years. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I got out, had to, you know, had kids at the time. So I did have to put food on the table, you know, and, um, you know, I uh, had this burning passion, a burning desire could not. I could not extinguish. You know, mm-hmm. it, it had it had to be fed, mm-hmm. and so I do my I, I I go to my regular job during the day, and I hit the studio at night. Yeah, you know, regular job at day, studio at night. Yeah, you know, and you know <laughs> that doesn't work well for a marriage, but you know it it was nothing I could do to 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 put this down. You, you know had what no mean? choice. Yeah, at, at this point. In my, it was a it was a matter of life or death to be perfectly honest. I mean, I'm not I'm not talking about physical death. But but spiritual death, you know what I mean? I mean, uh, yeah. If if you're if you're not doing what you were created to do, what you were destined to do, I mean, so part of you dies. You yeah. Know, you know. What? How, when did you know? Because you know, it, it takes that level of commitment and mm-hmm. passion to succeed at anything. Never mind a one in a million shot in the music industry. Mm-hmm. When did you know that you were good enough? You know, like what what would you advice would you give to these kids? Because some of the advice out there is really shitty. You know, Mm -hmm. when they tell people, oh, follow your passion. Well, look at, you know, William Hung from American Idol. I don't know if you remember him. Who followed his passion? Somebody told that kid to follow his passion and go on an American Idol. And he became a meme of a joke of like one of the really bad auditions. Right, right, right. So there, yes, of course, you have to follow your passion and do something you're in love with because you it takes that level of commitment to not quit when the times get hard Mm -hmm. but for all the kids out there who are thinking about music and a path and and a career that you have found success in when do they know like when do they know that they're they're good enough that this is something that they should pursue and was there a moment for you well i mean i i I think in 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 any industry you know there's always there's there's levels you know I mean, I never really knew what when it was because I was just working to get better. You know, what I mean, I was constantly working to get better, right? Um, for myself, I mean, I, after I mean, after a while, I wasn't even in competition with anyone else. You know, I was I was just searching uh, to be better at yeah. what I was doing. And 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 here's the other thing: a lot of people get discouraged or they get put off. Um, you know, or even offended to a point when someone says you're not good enough. Right. Ask them, well, what what is good enough? Yeah. You know what I mean? People stop right there and say, what do you mean I'm not good enough? No, no. no what do you mean? What are you talking about? And so I and I had this buddy. Uh, I'm, I'm my my aunt Bernice uh, owned a radio station. She believed in me as well. And uh, <laughs> I think I told you this story, but Keith Sweat was coming to town. Yeah. And uh, and um, and my aunt Bernice. I mean, uh, she didn't get a hold of Keith, but she got a hold of his music director, uh, Alan Grip Smith, <clears throat> and 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 she and she wore the, what he told me. Man, she wore me down. Mm. You know, and she, she said, I, 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 "You need to hear my nephew." So she called me. She said, "I got you a meeting with Alan Grip Smith. You need to go over there." Take you take your little cassette tape, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> boombox, yeah. you know, take all that stuff. And I and I went there. I met with him in his in his um. Now back to this. I I, I I sat down with him, pushed play, let him hear a couple of my songs. 
that I had written and that I had just put together myself on my little task cam. I had another had another buddy to actually play play yeah. and and um, we we worked out a few songs. Crazy, you know. And um, he, you know, what he said to me at, at, at that time. Now this is probably now this is probably about ten years later from my dad saying it. he's like, man, you know what? He said your voice is okay, but it ain't it's, it's not good enough for professional singing, man. You, he said, but you're a dope ass songwriter. That's right. exactly what he said to me. Hundred percent, yeah. And I and I wasn't even trying to be a songwriter at the time. Yeah. I was actually, I was offended by that. I was like, well, yeah. he's like, nah. You're, of course. How could you not be offended by yeah, that? He's yeah, saying, he said, you don't have it. Singing your heart out. Yeah, he said, you don't have it as a singer, man. You, you don't have it, but you're a dope-ass songwriter. He yeah. Said, if you're interested, yeah. you, know, I, I, you know, I'd love for you to come down. You know, I got, I, I'm working on some songs with Keith for the next album. Yeah. If you want to come down and work on some songs. Well, I mean, it, it was Atlanta. Right. And I, and I had heard, heard all everything about Atlanta mm -hmm. that, that, you know, this is the baby Hollywood. You know, if you're going to go, that's the place to be. So, so did I'm, you end up writing some songs for Keith, with Keith? Did you? Well, let me just say this. <laughs> <laughs> let me just say this. I Yes, I'm on a couple of Keith uh, Sweat records. Hey, and, uh, yeah, but, you but did. No, no, but no credits. But no credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, well, so, taking so. advantage of, I mean... Yeah, a harsh yeah. music industry taking advantage of a young songwriter, right? The business, the business is harsh, man. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and I remember, uh, I remember talking to my boy. I mean, and you know, he, he was a good friend of mine. Uh, this is, uh, man, I'm, it's a lot of a lot of lessons in this as you're taking me back through it. Yeah, you know, yeah. but because I, I, I kind of, I could have really got offended with with Alan because it was I, I only Keith knew even think knew anything about it. I, it was it was Alan that really kind of he took the credit for. Yeah. Uh, for the, for the songs that we had written together, yeah, for, for Keith, yeah, and um, I said, man, well, what about my? I said, you know, we we what's what's going on with the publishing, the writing, right? You know, I didn't know anything. He says, he said, no, 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 this. He said, we're do, we're doing publishing together. He said, that's writing. So he said, you don't have any writers' credits. I was right. Like, what are you talking about? I wrote. Right. And then and then I said, well, so what about all this? I mean, all this time and money I'm investing in. He says, well, I think you learned a lot, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I yeah. was like, what? I was mad. Yeah. But then, then but after, after I walked away from it, I was like, you know what? I did learn something. For sure. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and you never walk into another meeting or songwriting session like that without asking those questions. That's right? exactly, that's exactly right. Yeah. So, I mean, all, along the, now remember, this is the guy that told me that I couldn't sing. So I wasn't getting any, I wasn't getting any singing opportunities with him. Right. You know, uh, not not um, not as a lead singer or a soloist. Right. You know, so I had to. I spent I spent time. I spent money. Just continue to write my own songs and continue to record. Yeah. A, a song that you know uh, called "I Should Have Told You." I wrote that song. Oh, one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. I wrote Man. that. I wrote that song, and it was about him and his girl. You yeah. know, at the time. He never even heard it until later. Yeah, and he was like, "Who's this? Who's singing this?" It's a, yeah. This is about you, bro. Because yeah. I had because now my you know I, I'm you know back I'm back in the woodshed. Yeah, exercising my craft. You know nobody else was listening, and I was working because he had told me that I wasn't a good singer. Yeah. So when I let him hear it, he was like, "Who's this?" And yeah. I said, and I, I said, it's me. He said, whoa, whoa, hold on a minute, man, hold yeah. on. Yeah. And, and, you know, and we started writing more, started doing doing more lyrics. I mean, I actually started um, getting more opportunities to sing. And and the, and the singing, fast forward, has become the tip of the spear for me mm -hmm. because now I sing, I act, I also write songs, mm -hmm. but I also I also write scripts, yeah. you know. So, but, but, but my desire... To, and, and to believe and to put my belief in action. Um, believe is not enough. Hundred percent. Unless yeah. you're gonna, unless you wouldn't put the work in. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And and, and have a strategic path to it. You know. Yeah. I mean, you just can't. You know. I mean, you know, movement is is, is if you can run in place and get not get anywhere. You know what I mean? So so you know you have to progress. You have to figure out what progress is going to be for you. You know, and and it has to be for you. You know. You know, there, there's a there's so many lessons that I I heard there. Mm -hmm. I think one of the first things that I, I think are important for young musicians to listen to and young artists, any artist really, is that 
to not compare yourself to other people and continue working on your own craft mm -hmm. is the first thing, you mm -hmm. know? I think you worked really hard, even though people were telling you no, your own father telling you no, mm -hmm. you worked really hard to get yourself better, a little bit better every day. Right. The second thing is that you were prepared when the opportunity came. Absolutely. So when auntie called you, I'm like, yo, I worked my ass off to get you this meeting, yeah. get your ass to the radio station, bring your, your, your boom box. You were ready to take that opportunity and perform. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The, and the third thing I think is sometimes you got to let that shit roll off your back because in sales, in music, in anything like that, where you're presenting yourself and pitching yourself, you're gonna hear thousands and thousands of no's. Thousands of no's. Thousands right. of no's. And you have to believe in what you're doing. You have to actually be good at what you're doing, right. which is number one, right? right? You're getting better at your craft every day, but you have to, and you have to be prepared to strike while the iron is hot. You also have to be able to take that stuff with a grain of salt and just uh, learn from it. And you know, you learned a ton of lessons as well going through that songwriting thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I also think, so what about in terms of being at the right place at the right time? Because mm -hmm. it sounds like you were in the mix. You were in Atlanta. Your your aunt had this radio station. Yeah. You had this opportunity. Whereas if you were in Red Deer, right? You know, there's no Keith Sweat in Red Deer. That's right. You know what I mean? So you were in the right place. So now you've had this transition from Edmonton to L LA and mm -hmm. you're really kind of going full swing in sort of like a, a, se a second fire of your, right. uh, a second leg of your career now that is even accelerating even faster. Right. How important is that? The proximity S to where, you know, being in LA. Super important, man. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you have to be willing. If you really want it bad enough, you have to willing, be willing to change area codes and, right. and sometimes zip codes, mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, I'm glad you asked me that question because I can tell you that um, you know 20 years ago I had an opportunity to come out to go out to LA, and 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 I'm just going to be very transparent. I was scared. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know anybody out on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. All my family is here. Listen to me clear. All my family is over here. You know, my friends over here. I don't know anybody over there. You know, and 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 the guy that says, Oh man, I, I could get you plenty of work if you're out here, but mm -hmm. I can't get you any work when you you over in Atlanta. Right. So I, I, I passed. Uh, fast forward, and then mm -hmm. I ended up working with Jay, you know, uh, which was another another story all in itself where, you know, he, he you know, I mean, he's talking to us. Jay back, Leno we're talking yeah, about for oh, people yeah, see, who yeah. don't know, yeah. Yeah, Jay Leno backstage is saying to me, hey, you want to do some shows in Vegas with us, mm -hmm. with, with, with me? I said, and I'm like, yeah, I'm talking about the Tri-City Rat Pack. And he says, uh, okay. Call him Mirage, tell him that you talked to me and that I want to do some shows with you. And that's exactly what he said to me. Really? He said, call him Mirage. And he said it again. He said, call him Mirage, tell him you tell him you talked to me. And did I, that work? When you called the it, Mirage, did they? Man, like, can you imagine? I'm yeah, like, and, and, how, and, and he's Jay Leno. So anybody could have just called him and like, yo, yeah, I talked to Jay. That's exactly right. So, I mean, so, I mean, I didn't, I mean, because it's Jay Leno, so I don't want to say, well, what's the number? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> Right. I'm just I'm just like, okay. okay and yeah. I walked one like, I think this dude is testing me. Yeah. You know, so man, I mean, I, I you know, I had to give I had to give uh Donovan credit, you know, because I mean it was an all out assault. I mean, a couple other people, but we were calling day and night trying to get to the, get in, in touch with the right people wow. at the Mirage. And I finally got in touch with the right person. Yeah. And then and then I said, man, same thing. I said, I talked to Mr. Leno and he said we we did we opened for him a couple of times in Canada and um he wants to do some shows with us. And the guy was like, okay, well, let me hear a little clip. And he just kind of, just kind of blew me off. But I kept, just kept calling this dude, man. Just, I mean, I just kept calling him. And uh, he finally said, what's well, Terrell? Now he knows my name. Yeah. yeah. When I, call, he's, yeah. Like, I had a cell phone number. And, and, and yeah. the, I don't know how, I, I don't know how that transpired, but I ended up with both of his numbers. Yeah, doo, yeah. Doo, doo, doo. yeah, yeah, good. And he says, Terrell, Terrell, listen, listen, you know, uh, all right, listen, let me ask you this. How are you going to get paid? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, we, we pay in U.S. dollars. I mean, you're in, you're in Canada. How are we going to get paid? I'm American. I said, I'm an American citizen. Yeah. He says, you are? I said, yeah. He says, so we would just pay you? Yeah. I said, yeah. He says, okay, well, let me call Mr. Little. He never even called him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he never. How long was that period from the Jay saying that to, you know, that conversation? Like about four months. Not, four months. Yeah, of calling. Of every day 
uh, you, Donovan, shout out to Donovan yeah, yeah. and Chris from the Tri City Rat Pack, yeah, yeah. calling and harassing these guys, trying to get to the right person. Yeah. Um, res talk about resiliency. Yeah, nobody knows this story, man, in, in detail. Like I, know, but I was like, I figured Jay just, yeah. Why did you know Jay just call somebody and say, hey, book yeah. these guys. These guys are my openers for the next few months. No like, way. wow. It, so I mean, so I mean, and 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 um. So we got in touch with the right people. Yeah. And finally, uh, and and he finally called me back. No, he didn't actually. He didn't call me back. Next thing I knew, he said, "Okay, well, let me get, let me talk to Jay then." And the next thing I knew, he was sending me a contract to be at to be at the Mirage two weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to be there two weeks later. Yeah. I, I called. I called the guys. I said, "Man." Clear my are, schedule. Are we going? Clear the schedule, yeah. D you know, Donovan, Chris, we, we we went went down there, and when we got backstage, and here we we ended up. His 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 dressing room was across uh, from Boys to Men. Boys to Men was doing this, doing the same uh, venue, yeah. same stage. Yeah. So we were all we were working on a day that Boys to Men wasn't there. So they gave us their their dressing room. Watch out. So we're in the, we're in the, we're in the Boys to Men dressing room sharing. Yeah. We get out, we walk down, there's a, there's a picture of us walking down for the first time, walking down backstage. We get backstage, we do our set, we come off, Jay's, Jay's standing there, and guess what he said? Oh, you made it! <laughs> I was like, man, this Yeah, guy, thanks, Jay. Yeah, yeah, like, he was testing us, man. Yeah. And so, and he finished doing his set, we sat there, we watched him, and and he says, when he, when he comes off, he says, well, boys, see you at the next one. And for three years, he said, he would say to us, see you at the next one. Unreal. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. So if you look at an example like that, T, you know, f for some of these musicians who are giving up or like not even trying to, expecting shows to just fall in your lap, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, you talk about a direct connection with Jay Leno himself backstage saying like, I'd love to have you perform. And you still have to have the resiliency and consistency and persistence to right to chase that show down right. and land arguably one of the biggest opening shows, you know, a yeah. string of shows in your career uh, to date. Who knows? Maybe even not. I mean, you're doing some incredible stuff right now with East Bay Soul. Yeah. You know, let's maybe like, unless you have anything to add to that, I'd love to transition I, and hear about some East Bay Soul stuff. I do. I, yeah. I, yeah. Can I, if, I, if I can just add this one thing to to the story with when, when, it, when you included Mr. Leno, because I, I realized uh, we were backstage and our time with him was limited. And I needed to be able to build a relationship with him. Uh, and I know he was a nice enough guy that if I had, if I had his ear for, for 10 minutes that I, I'd get some, some real nuggets about where to, how, to, how to move to the next level. And so when I knew we were coming, I, I took the opportunity to write him a letter. Mm -hmm. I wrote him a letter before we even left Canada. Mm -hmm. I wrote him a letter. Thank you for every opportunity you've given us. I cannot believe that we're still riding with you like this. Mm -hmm. If you ever get a chance, here's my phone number. I would love to talk to you some more. Mm -hmm. What's this? What's that? What's the odds, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the, I mean, so fo folded it up, put it in the envelope. When we were saying our goodbyes, the next time I said, "Mr. Leno, I just want to just you know properly thank you. Here's here's a letter. I just want." He put it in his pocket, and about a month later. I get a phone call. Yeah. And it's a, we were just talking about this. It was a spam. I mean, it said unknown caller. I was like, unknown caller. I'm not answering that. Yeah. Scam. Yeah. And yeah. then voicemail came up. Yeah. I'm, I listened to it later. Hi, Terrell. This is Jay Leno. I'm, 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 like, I'm so, God so, so, so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm so sorry. It took me so long to call you. <laughs> oh, my God. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I'm so sorry. I'm, so, I'm like, oh, man, I blew it, man. Next Sunday, it was Super Bowl Sunday. I will never forget that. And then Unknown Caller came up again. It was him again. Answer that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, he, and he, he said, hey, hey, Terrell. Just, hey, this is Mr. Leno. How you doing? I said, and, and I really am kind of like just unbelievable that he was calling me. And, I, and, and me and him, I mean, he said, so what was your question? I asked him a couple questions. And to your point, he says, uh, I, he says, "Well, Terrell, let me ask you. In in Edmonton, are you are you doing a lot of shows?" I say, "Are you working lots?" And you could only work so much here. Let's me. It's a beautiful place. 
but you could only do so much here. And, mm-hmm. and I mean, you, you, you go in circles in a while mm-hmm. and I love every opportunity I've had here, but I, I knew I was going somewhere else. I knew I needed to be somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And so I knew the question he was asking me. I said, no, not, not really. He says, why are you not in LA? Mm-hmm. I really couldn't answer the question. Mm-hmm. And, and he, in, 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 in my tongue tiedness, he said, Terrell, you know, you're not really leveraging the opportunities I'm giving you. Mm-hmm. He said, you're in the wrong place. Mm-hmm. He said, he said, you, he said you, you and those guys, all you guys are gifted. He said, but I tell you, I could recommend you often mm-hmm. if you were in LA, but I can't mm-hmm. recommend you there. Mm-hmm. You get here. He says, and then he stops where he says, you spend nine months, you stop what you're doing and you spend nine months in LA and I guarantee you, your life is changing. Mm. And since I, and I, I, I took him on his word, I did that. I mean, I mean, a lot of these was accepted challenge. You remember, remember I told you, Grip said, if you want to come to Atlanta. Right. Now, now here's Jay said, if you want to go to come to LA. Right. And spend nine months, I did it. And, and man, and, it, and it's worked. I mean, now I've, I've still got great relationships here in Edmonton. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've, 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 I mean, my team, I've been working with some of these guys 10, 15 years. Mm-hmm. We're still able to do great shows here, but now we can we can provide something better for someone else here because I have these connections in Los Angeles. Beautiful people there who have just um, one by one come into my life. Uh, Preston Glass, I mean, he's, he's, he's written songs for everybody you can possibly name mm-hmm. uh, with the Gambling Hub group. And and and, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm on a, I'm on a, uh, I'm doing a uh, bar show. I had no idea. I mean, I don't even really like doing that kind of thing. But this guy just really said, man, you need to come out. People need to hear who you are. Mm-hmm. And little did I know that, I mean, it was, it was a lot of people just hanging out there. That I didn't know their names, but yet they had, they were really some some heavyweights mm-hmm. in the industry. I come off the stage after seeing Let's Stay Together by Al Green. And this guy says, man, uh, you know, I got a band for you if you're interested. They just lost their lead singer. Mm-hmm. And... You ever heard of Greg Adams from Tower of Power? I said, yeah, of course. Of course. He said, well, he's looking for a lead singer. I can put you on the call tomorrow if you want. Mm. And, and he was he was the entertainment lawyer, uh, uh, Ken Green. Ken Green's now my entertainment lawyer. I have met him for the first time. Put me on the call with, with Greg. Um, yeah, they had just lost their lead singer. They sent me some songs. Uh, I had to be able to study those songs and learn them. Mm-hmm. And he said to me, Greg said to me on the phone, you know, it's okay if you just if you read them or something. It's all right. I wasn't willing to do that. I'm not gonna go in there and read. Right. I'm gonna know these songs because I'm not gonna be. I mean, just some guy that walked in. Probably everybody's reading. Right. So you need to be able to separate yourself from right. everyone else. Right. So I learned those songs before I went to the before I went to the audition. Yeah. And you know, and lo and behold, you know, my 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 dad, you know, Alan. And some and, and other people who ne- didn't necessarily believe that I had it at that time, twenty years later, yeah, somebody think I, I got it because now you know I've written I've written songs for our new album, yeah. I'm the lead singer for East Bay Soul, and it's you know really it's not just about the talent. The other thing is these relationships uh, are, are are rich. Um, I mean, it's just great people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm I'm. I'm confident that we're going to be up for not Grammy nomination for this vocal jazz album of the year. The album's uh, been number one for five weeks on yeah, Amazon. Yeah, 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 Congratulations! It's, 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 yeah, man, it's a, and it's a team effort, man. It's yeah. like like all these people. I mean, if you if you look at like the team that I work with here in yeah. in, in Edmonton, I have to give some shouts out to people like John Cameron, who, you know, who who helped me, who who you know kind of paved the way for me to get some real exposure here in 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 Edmonton, and you know. Uh, but I, I just I just knew that there was more to it in terms of what I want, wanted to share with the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need to be able to expand beyond Edmonton, mm-hmm. you know, expand beyond Atlanta. I'm from expand beyond Milwaukee, and you know, and and and, and do something special for the world. That was that's my that's been my dream. That's been my vision. And so you know, if if local, it's nothing wrong with local. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's it's interesting that as small as the world has become mm-hmm. with social media and the internet, that there is still something to be said about being in the heart of it. Yeah, you know, there's right. still something to be said about being rubbing shoulders at that dive bar right. with the right people who are there who wouldn't be here in Edmonton, and you wouldn't have had that connection to be fronting East Bay Souls right now. Like it's just 
um, still as as small as the world has become, you still need to place yourself in the right position to take advantage of those opportunities. Right, you right, know? right. And I also, teamwork is a big thing that you're really great at too. I mean, your passwords for are always teamwork yeah, and yeah, you've yeah. built a business based on teamwork and your musical career. I mean, I've always found that from the moment that we met, it was just like, you know, I'm, you said to me, I've been, I've been watching what you've been doing, man. <laughs> right. I've been watching what you've been doing. You got, you got a good work ethic and uh, I think we should, we got, we got lots of work to do. Today. Right, right, right. And, and so I, I it, right away was what were you gonna say? It was a minute before we even did it, anything, right? It was, yeah, yeah. It was. You had yeah. mentioned it and we saw each other out at an event and you're like, you know, we're gonna we're gonna link up. I'm like, okay, another sure, right? right, right. And you hear that all this like, yeah, okay, well let's link up. You called me the next right. week, like, hey, let's link up. We wanna come to the studio, I wanna sit down and meet. And from that moment you were I knew with a, a real talent and skill of yours was, and not just because you were asking me, but, but you were surrounding yourselves with pieces, no strong pieces of the puzzle of your team no from question. marketing to an assistant, to a booking agent, to a tour man, to all of these pieces that Absolutely. Um, are help building the success that you're having now, you know? You haven't uh, tried to do it on your own. Right. Obviously, this is an important value of yours. That's yeah. working. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Absolutely, you know, it's just you know, teamwork makes the dream work, man. Mm -hmm. And and you know what? And and you have to understand that that you know, no matter where you are in this journey, I mean, there's always going to be someone that that you need, someone that knows more about that thing than you, you know, and someone that I mean, somewhere along the line, your your vision, your dreams. And what you were called to do is aligning with someone else's. You need to find out who that is. Right. You know, and, and you know, what's the right timing, you know? So you make sure you let Ro know our stories. Like, I mean, right. like, it, you know, it's, uh, you know, some sometimes, you know, it's like timing is everything and so is relationships. So, but if you put, yeah, I'm just going to be, I'm, I'm just going to say this because, I mean, a, a lot of what I said, I didn't even talk about my personal relationships you know you know i had i've been married a couple times mm -hmm. it it didn't work out because you know uh, i was i was really driven you know as a as a you know a, a visionary as an entertainer as a dreamer you know and even though i you know i, I never want to hurt anybody's feelings you know the timing for me to be well, a husband at the time mm -hmm. and it was no dis there was no disrespect you know uh, my my relationships they wanted what they needed, mm -hmm. but I wasn't able to give it to them. So you know what I mean. You need you need to be able to mature to a point where it's like, okay, what you know? I mean, what can I do? You can spread yourself too thin, you know. And mm -hmm. it says, you know, the, the the cat the chase what mice nine mice catches none. No. I have no idea what. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what expression you're going for, brother. But my, my, <laughs> but my, I get your point. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. The, it, I mean, it was it was it was not um, it was not in the cards for me at the time, and you know, I, I, I had to realize, okay, it, this this is if, if this is what I'm going to do, I have to focus on this. I'm right. going to be this, and 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 I'm going to have to wait for that. I mean, I did. I, mean, I had had great relationships, you know, with some 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 beautiful ladies, you know, uh, but um, you know. I knew what I was passionate. I knew what I was destined to you do. You knew what you had to do, yeah. And it does. I mean, everybody. Not everybody can go, man. You know what I mean? It's, right. You know, it's just, just yeah. Not, people. Yeah. It ebbs and flows, and people come in and out of your life for right. for different reasons. Right. And and uh, you've lived such a um, storied musical journey already. Mm -hmm. And you know, Jay Z once said that uh, music is a young man's game. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think you have found some success early on and a big story to that is continuing to find success now in a more um, mature musical career. Right. What do you think are some of the um, advantages and disadvantages of, of um, having this longevity in the game? Of like having seen what you've seen and learned what yeah. you know and um, be to bring you where you are today. What are some of the advantages and disadvantages of that? Well, I mean, I, mean, I think some of the disadvantages uh you know might be um uh, you know do uh, do you have the do you have the willingness to endure you know because it is um i don't know if it's a young man's game right i think it's just a 
a patient man's game, mm. you know, and, um, you know, you know, endure. I mean, yeah. and, uh, and, and, you know, because the pressures of life, you know, are going to, are, are part of life, you know, and so you got to, you got to know how to navigate through that. And, and sometimes, you know, you have to, um, you know, you have to be in first gear and then sometimes you need to be in fifth gear, but you need to just to back it. Okay. It's not time for fifth gear. Now you need to back it off. Right. And you need to go back down to second or third gear for a little, little while. Right. But, but still constantly moving forward. So, I mean, that's, I mean. But not always full throttle. Interesting. Not yeah. always full throttle, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, just, just, you know, you know, pace yourself. Patience you know, and timing. And, 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 and be very calculated. I mean, I mean, and, and I don't say, I mean, calculation sometimes has a negative connotation to it, right? Mm-hmm. But it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's very important to be strategic in, in your life. You of know course, what I mean? Yeah. And so yeah. this, so and 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 this is this is part of it. So uh, disadvantages, you know, when it when it comes to that, and then you know, where does it fit in your personal relationships? You mm-hmm. know, yeah, you know, there's sometimes that you gotta be willing to make sacrifices. That the that the regular person is not gonna mm-hmm. be willing to accept to take. You know what I mean? It's like I'm not, I'm not willing to, you know, I'm not willing to do that. I'm not, I'm not willing to be a part of your life if you're gonna do that. Right. You know, and you know that's that's uh it's that's been that's been a a, a pretty consistent story for me. It's like I understand that that that, that, that. some yeah. of the, some of the some of the uh, advantages or benefits though is if you know if you if you try to be a good person and maintain, uh, you know, integrity, uh, uh, maintain kindness, you know, all of these things that you know we learned when we were kids, be kind, you know, and I mean, still incorporate that into being a, a, a business person, you know, or a musician or a singer, or whatever, you know, you can come back around and, you know, uh, hey, no hard, no hard feelings that we had to part ways, but you know, we still cool, right, right. I never want to, you know, I, I, I never want to um, yeah, hurt anybody's feelings. But in in a way, um, this is the same sound harsh. But sometimes life is too short to not do the right thing just because you're going to hurt someone's feelings, right? You know, and if it, 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 that sounds harsh, I mean, it's the truth because you're not doing anyone any favors, you or some someone else around you. Right. I mean, if you're not being your best self, you're mm-hmm. just not, man. You know yeah. what I mean? You yeah. have you have to be you. So I mean, uh, um, these these you know these relationships is tough, man. Relationships are tough. Uh, but uh, what's even tougher is getting to the end of a road and 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 not even and, and looking back and saying, man, I didn't even try to you know do what I've dreamt of doing my whole life. You know, I didn't even try. Yeah, and I didn't try because I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. Yeah, so that sounds rough. That yeah, sound not rough. at all. No, yeah, yeah. not so, at all. Not my brother. I so, could talk to you for hours. I, yeah. you know, I, I, I want to wrap this up. I just want to let you know. I feel so. Um, so much gratitude to have a friend like you in my life to be surrounded. I oh. feel so lucky to be surrounded by such talent. Oh you man, know? I, hey, I, I love you, man. And listen, and, I love you back, and, bro. And, and, and listen, I. I Ditto. I mean, my my goodness, man. I mean, you know, I mean, you're only you're only thirty years older than me, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we know that'll never be true. You old man. But man you, yeah. old. <laughs> you look good though. Super you, man, it's, super. it's true. Black don't crack. You look good. <laughs> yeah, but, well, but I don't know. Man. I hope I, I don't look know if as good crack, as you when I'm seventy eight. I, I don't know you if know? it don't crack, but I'm telling you, man. You know, take care of yourself. That's a, that's another thing that we got. When you take care of yourself, man, you only. You only have you only have one body, yeah. and it is it's, it's you know it's it's geared for a certain amount of lives, but you can you can you can shut it down, yeah. You know if course, you don't take yeah. care of it, man. But yeah. man, here, but just let me just say this. I mean, what what you and and, and Ro and I mean and Janice, I'm gonna shout out a couple people, man. I mean, man, I love you guys, man. Just and you inspire me, you know. Um, you know, I mean, you even say, hey, hey, Terrell, come on, man, you man, you. You know, and when I get tired, you know, I got friends like you who say, man, Terrell, you do better than that, man. You know, you 
Go ahead and raise that bar, man. And of course, like, because I know where you're at. Right, I, right, right. I know how good you are. Yeah, yeah, You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And I'm not going to be that type of friend or that type of person yeah. that will just be like, oh, man, that was great. No, yeah. because I've seen you be right, great. Right, right, right. So when it's not great, I know that it's like, man, yeah. that was not you. That's true. You and know so, what I mean? And I'm good friends will call you absolutely, out on that. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, and I have people, you know, uh, yeah, I've said, you know, back to you know, like, like grip and you, you know, that, that was, and I've, and I've talked to people and said, you know, you're not there yet, right. but you can be. And I've, I've, I've seen attitudes change. It's like, right. Okay. Now I'm only reason why I'm telling you that is because I care. Yeah. I see something in you. Right. That if you take heed, you know, uh, right. it, it'll take you to the next level. But, you know, but I mean, if, if, if everybody and their mother are telling you that you're the greatest thing on earth and then you get, you get offended because I come along Tell you the truth. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, a little says, inspiration from your pops there to be able to see that in somebody yeah. that maybe not everybody sees and mm -hmm. pull that gift out yeah. of help pull that gift out of them. Because whether dad knew it or not, it was the it was the business that I need to get. And my dad was a great businessman too. Right. But I mean, whether he knew that uh, uh, when I, when he whether said he no or not, articulated that or not, that's man, kind man, of. If I hadn't gone, if I hadn't gone, got that business. You know, and I still, I'm still learning every single day, but yeah. I mean, I had to get that structure, yeah. you know, and I need to get that, I need to have that endurance. And I was a little, I was a little soft too. I don't know if I would have, could have, could have heard no so many times right. if I hadn't gone down that road, yeah. you know, uh, without, so. Yeah, yeah. So he did teach you a lesson there. Sure did, sure. Everything happens yeah, yeah. for a reason. Yep. Yeah. And then shout out to dad here. Just, I mean, he came to, he came to one of my shows and he flew out to one of my shows much later on. And he said, and he had to, he said, Son, I had to tell you something. He says, back then, you know, I want to, I want to be a singer. And he said, yeah. but I didn't have the guts to do it. Yeah, I didn't want you to get hurt. So, but I, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm damn proud of you. Yeah, so I wish was, I had a chance was, to meet him. That was years I'm later, like man. I'm gonna cry thinking of my dad. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> well, we talked about that, man. But yeah, hey, this has been great, man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Um, you know, the business side, I feel like we could have a whole, I need to get you back. Let's do another so we, one. We need to do another one because that is a whole other, if not 80% of the success that it takes. The talent is one thing. If you don't have that business side that you learned in the Navy, right. you you know, there's no telling what would have happened. So it's such a huge part that we could do a whole nother session on. Um, but you know, we, one thing we've never had a chance to do together, as much as we've worked together, I've mm -hmm. got to do your intro. I've gone on tour with you. Yeah. We have done a song together. Yeah. We've never performed together. That's right. Can we do that? Yeah, let's Can do we it. So a little while ago, we dropped a song. I'm gonna. Right. It's called Feel This. It's available now everywhere. We recorded that in the middle of yep. COVID with yep. a bunch of other local artists. I wanted you to come in and provide some of that sexy talent and do that Terrell dope. Edwards yeah. thing that yeah. you do, yeah, we love which it. you did the damn thing. Yeah. Um, and we recorded that and shot a video together in the middle of COVID in isolation. So like one at a time, we've never shared a state you know what i mean we let's got, do that let's we gotta do, do that let's do it let's do that man <laughs> thank you for coming brother all right hey love you man let's do it. this is dope hey, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, terrell yeah. edwards y'all <laughs> and i'm baby J. hey one of the baddest oh, vocalists yeah. to ever do it, baby. This is called Feel This. Yeah, self-isolating and I'm so sick. Up on a track, we zoom in, we got the whole click. And Jay Dats, and usually we be in your face. But stay back, cause this is a new normal day. So taste that, I ain't used to driving around, nobody downtown. In the middle of the street as I'm pulling the camera out. Got they masks on and they pass on like the sirens. Yellow skin flippy, so they treat me like a virus. Quarantine is really a foreign thing, a boring scene. Fortunately, I record he. I need more peeps and no more me. I'm exhausted, like Drake don't need no more me. The B squad. And IG is the new TV We going live, you growing your hair a white goatee Well so am I, cinematic scene Minus the lights, camera action Flatten the curve, that is the word Bring And it it's alright, baby Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's alright Yeah, feel this isolation You can't touch that falsetto, man Nobody do it like Terrell Edwards, baby. Yo.
That song is called Feel This, it's available everywhere. We shot that together in the middle of COVID with eight local recording artists. That's my man Terrell Edwards right there. My brother, thank you so much for being on the show. Hey! Nobody does it like you, brother. I appreciate you. Love you too, bro. Yeah. Peace! Ain't always easy, baby. But let's get it. Hey! 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 Woo! And it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop it. What can we do?